researcher? Yes. We yes. <laughs> we were out la this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Looking where? Uh, what are you gonna say? Uh uh You can give them rough areas. Where? Up uh northern New Mexico, up towards Colorado. Nor yeah. northern New Mexico, Colorado. Right around the border there. Um but we, we did stay in Chalma as our home base this last week because it's... That's nice up there. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so, but we have also plans to maybe go to Wyoming uh, later in this, mm -hmm. in the summer. And I have an area in Wyoming that I want to look at we've never been to. So... I think everybody should go look at Maine. <laughs> I think Maine's a good state to look for. Uh, <laughs> Just saying. Uh, I think I better shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but you're making me nervous a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, um, we have, for myself, since we started searching, we haven't ever been to most of these places before. So we have experienced a lot of beautiful, beautiful places that we had never been before. And so I think that he, he's a, you've awakened that in a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. On we go, the virtue lies in the journey, not the prize. Yeah. And I, I agree. I'm telling you that, you know, like we, we had never, I had never been to, you know, up to Montana. Up to, Front door? No, no, she's in the kitchen. Okay. Yeah, I had never been through. The only state I'd been to was part of Colorado before this. And um, so this, I've traveled all over the place now. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of fun. Well, I was born in Georgia, but we moved around in a lot of 27 states I've lived in. And when I read his book, I'm like, oh, I was a kid in that area. I know that area. Yeah. And so it's now nice to go back. you understand why I wrote the book, yeah. I Hid the Treasure Chest. It's nice to go back and see those And you're a perfect example of why I did it, yeah. why I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you know, uh, my grandkids watch my YouTube videos. And, uh, oh, that's nice. You know, they, they tell their friends about it. And they are little mm -hmm. mini treasure hunters now. And they always want to know when we come back from our trips, you know, did you find it, you know, and, uh, you know. I like your wonderful emails, this, this guy had not spoken to his brother for 17 years, when he found out about the treasures, called his brother on the phone, and now they're searching together. Yeah, that's wonderful. And this one little girl sent me an email, she must have been about seven, eight, nine years old, she said, Mr. Finn, if I find a treasure, do I have to share it with my brother? <laughs> <laughs> well, those, those emails are very rewarding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I have just enjoyed, I've just enjoyed myself It's been so an much. adventure for everyone. Everyone that goes out, it's an adventure. Yeah. And you may not be doing your YouTube, etc. Well, that, no. Yeah, that's well, true. None of us would and be we sitting would, here today because right. how would our paths have crossed? Right. You know, had, had it not been for what it did. Mm -hmm. so, and there's a lot of people, I mean, that have come together and met. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. And, you know, yeah, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot different when uh, you mm -hmm. see people. I, I used to watch other YouTube channels, and, uh, and then I met a lot of the people in person, like last year at the... Uh, J.J. Diggins event. how good, you know, 
that was just a bunch of good people. Oh yeah, that was fantastic. We raised thirty-two thousand dollars from her. She's the one that had her yeah. dentist in her home destroyed by a fire in California. Mm -hmm. She was a tre treasure hunter. Mm -hmm. All these treasure hunters got than together than and we raised a bunch of money for it. Yeah, wasn't it was 50-some thousand. I think it was close to 60. Yeah. I think it was close to yeah. 60,000. Yeah. I think it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a lot, I mean, considering... Like Everyone pulled together and right. That just forest. makes your heart grow right. when you see people right. come together like that. Mm -hmm. like that just shows well, there's good fun, people there. When I started this thing, you know, I've written 11 books. And my first eight books, nobody, mm -hmm. my parents are dead, who's going to buy my book? Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote The Thrill of the Chase, and I, I told my printer that I wanted 500 copies. He said, you can't get just 500 copies, it's, it's not economically feasible. So he took me into printing 1,000 copies, and I didn't think anybody would buy my book, but I told a story about the treasure chest that Margie Goldsmith in Manhattan wrote a Hemispheres, Hemispheres magazine behind the seat in United Airlines airplanes. And the next day I got 1,200 emails. I mean, my server shut down. It took me three days to get my computer back on. Because she wrote such a good article, everybody's tearing that thing out of the magazine and took it over. Yeah. But that, that launched the, you know, you know, everybody thinks their, every writer thinks their book is the best one ever written. Yeah. And it never is, but I tell people I got that Pulitzer Prize for throw the chase, except they and lost it in the mail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, just, that's just, I mean, that gives me some satisfaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and still, you know, when we were at Collective Works uh, a, a year ago, I think, they had, um, this was before the uh, event for, for Jamie, mm -hmm. yeah. and. We were there, and they had stacks of your books. How many have sold now? Of the, of the, the bookstore I sold over more than 53,000 copies. Of book. But those books weren't for sale in the bookstore. Those books, they were putting them in envelopes and mailing yeah, them out. They were already, yeah, they were already ordered. Well, 53,000 copies busy. of books sold by an independent bookstore. A book written by that personally published. Mm -hmm. Independently published. I mean, that, that's that's pretty good. Right? Busy. Yeah, yeah, because they don't even have it out on the shelf. Yeah. You have to that's ask. Most people steal it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. reading it. Yeah. Well, a good thing for you know, I don't make any money on my three memoirs. I've given all the books away, but as a result of those books, I'm selling my other books that never did sell before. TP Smoke and my Indian. Okay. Yeah, I, I enjoyed TP Smoke a lot too. Mm -hmm. That was, um, mm -hmm. well, last year when we were here, and, uh, we got the, some of your books when we were here. And we took them home. And we have them all, all together. We have a forest fan area. <laughs> <laughs> I have a forest fan Eric Sloan room mm -hmm. yeah. in the house. Mm -hmm. that I've never had a book collection in my life. Mm -hmm. I do now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then of course I had to. Uh, I got Douglas Preston's The Codex. Mm -hmm. Do you have Have you seen it? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, interesting you mentioned that because when I had a kidney removed and they found cancer, they gave me a 20% chance of living three years. But one night I was talking to my daughter. I said, my, my, my oldest daughter is 59. She did not know who Clark Gable was. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was so atrocious that, that my daughters didn't know uh, who Clark Gable was because he was such a big deal when I was their age. Right. So that's when I decided to start writing my memoir. Uh, and I had a yellow pad and a pencil and I just started writing my several hundred, going back to my earliest recollections of when I was a little kid, my, my mother used to wash clothes on the rug board. Mm -hmm. and, but we had a dryer that you could, you could, you could put the clothes in wet and turn the marver, and the marver would squeeze all the water out. 
but there was a little stool in, in here that was about about this big, and, and my earliest recollection is not being able to get up on that stool, and my father picked me up and put me on the stool, and I thought it was so funny, I laughed, and they told that story for a long time, but how, how old are you when you can't get up on a six-inch stool? Yeah. I think, it, I think it's important for everybody to, to start talking about themselves, who their parents were, who their grandmothers were. I used to have long talks with my grandmother. One of the things that sticks out most to me was my grandmother talking about and is running through their barnyard in Fort Worth trying to catch chickens. Mm -hmm. And they, she said, my nose was pushed against the window, and my father she said, leave them alone. If they can catch the chickens, they can have them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Indians were really wild, but, but you, you, did, you didn't mess with the Indians when my grandmother was a little girl. Yeah. And of course, that's a, that's a world that my kids and my grandkids, and I had four great grandkids, it's something that they'll that they will never know unless I tell them. Right. And that's why it's important that all of us here spend 10 minutes a night writing, writing your memoir. What is it you remember about? Mm -hmm. One of my great regrets is that I never do my, my father's parents. I, I don't even know my grandfather's yes. name on that side. Oh, okay. But you know, Homo sapien as a species is the only animal that's like that. I mean, the buffalo has a calf, and 18 months later, it doesn't even it's recognize it. Mm -hmm. They go their own way, and I'm not sure that that may be the best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On we go, the virtue lies in the journey, not the prize.